<gasps> I did that so I so could have something to put on the towel card to let you guys know <laughs> I'm reviewing a bad movie today. Because, <laughs> yeah, no one out there gives a crap about this film at all. But in my head, I'm like, it's getting terrible reviews. And I know me reviewing a bad film, you guys love that and it's good for ratings. So I'm going to go ahead and see this. But then after I had already dedicated myself to going and seeing this, the box office results for this weekend came in and came in seventh. <laughs> Woo! The like small indie Kumail Nanjani romance movie came in higher than this one. I was like, oh my God. Uh, I would far rather have gone and seen that and just reviewed it. But <laughs> yeah, so it's a weird one of the things where it's like, okay, people love to review bad films, but no one knows what the fuck this is. Uh, so we'll see. But hey everyone, I'm Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is our post geek out reaction for Wish Upon. And for anybody who's not seen one of these before, the post geek out reaction is not a review. I ain't doing a review for this. <laughs> but if I did, the review would be spoiler free and I'd sit down and I'd think of everything that I want to say and write it all out. Post geek out reaction is just an open honest discussion between the two of us about the thing that we just saw. You didn't see it. No. But you actually wanted to see this. I it's just, it looks so hilariously bad it that I'm just like, out of morbid curiosity, that I want to see it. Yeah, and oh my god, this, there's no way this isn't making it into my 10 worst of the year list. <laughs> like, even if I see 10 movies worse than this, it's getting an honorable <laughs> mention uh, for one element. And I'll get into that in a second, but basically, I'll go ahead and let you guys know right now. Uh, I missed like maybe the first 10 minutes of this film because I showed up to the theater, I was already running late, but I was like, all right, trailers are still going. I know the trailer's still going. I went to the little kiosk to get my, uh, to get my ticket. And then it went, your ticket is now printing. And nothing happened. <laughs> so then I had to go and wait in the long line to go and speak to the person at the register. They were like, oh, well, we can't do that at this kiosk. So you gotta go see my manager. He's at that kiosk. So I went over uh... to that line. So yeah, it's like, I was running late, I'll admit. But I was there enough time to see it, and then that happened. So I missed like the first ten minutes of this. You didn't? Did you but miss? Anything? I know. I know what the setup of this film yeah. is. Pretty much everything I missed. They later on explained that happened, or it was in the trailers. So I didn't really miss anything. Okay. So basically, what happens is this girl. Uh, I think her name was Claire. You can call her Claire. Why not? <laughs> uh, but this girl, Claire. Uh, her mom committed suicide when she was a kid, and now she lives in basically the Sanford and Son house. She's just full of crap, uh, and her dad is a dumpster diver. I don't know what he actually does for a living. I don't know if it's ever explained, but like he is like a dumpster diver. He goes out with his buddy, and they just rummage through trash and find stuff. Uh, so yeah, his house does kind of just look like the Sanford and Son house. It's just low with crap. So one day while he's out dumpster diving, her dad finds this ancient Chinese wishing box and he gives it to his daughter Claire. And she doesn't know what it is because she can't read the Chinese inscriptions on there. But there's this mean girl at school, this mean popular girl. And here's something I gotta say right now. The three main girls in here, they're Claire, her sassy friend who's got all the answers, and then her other friend who was played by the girl who played Barb on Stranger Things who has really turned being Barb on Stranger Things into a career. Like, every time I see her in something, like, you know she got cast, because, like, they're, like some producers like, all the kids online talking about Barb. Give me Barb <laughs> in this picture. Don't have her be the star, though. We still need, like, someone else for that. But give me in the picture. So she's in there. Every single popular kid in here is, like, a foot and a half taller than our three main girls. It's partly because, like, the actors are actually just that much taller. But also, every time they're in frame, they shoot them like that, so that was like... Is it because they're trying to make them intimidated? Yeah, exactly. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, they're the big, pretty, popular people. Like, <laughs> it's like all the tall... It's so cartoonish. Like, they're all, like, seven <laughs> feet tall. It's like it's like Invader Zim, where the tallest are the ones yeah, in charge. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're calm now, aren't you? Good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for everybody at home. Oh. Cosmo! Yay, Yay Cosmo! Yay. Black. Wow, that's way off. Okay. <laughs> that's how the popular kids at school will see everybody. <laughs> see, I could be a director of this film too. But so one day, the mean girl is mean to Claire, and she comes home and she grabs the wishing box and goes, I wish she would just rot. And then that night at a slumber party she's having, she wakes up, 
and like she sees this weird stuff growing on her foot. She takes her sock off, it's completely like black from there down. And she looks at her face, she's got some black stuff on the side of her cheek, and she screams at it. And they discover, like, oh yeah, she picked up a flesh eating virus uh, at the spa that she went to. And it's like, wow, so she rotted. Like, pauses, looks at the camera, like, oh. <laughs> get it? In case you didn't know what the movie's about. Uh, it's like, does she like die from the rotting? No, she doesn't die from it. Uh, but she, um, she just, like, goes to the emergency room and gets, like, part of her face, like, kind of, like, cut off, which is, like, that's something that, like, apparently, like, flesh-eating viruses actually aren't, like, fatal, like, you just get, like, parts of your body ch chopped off, <laughs> so you kind of wish that they were fatal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, from there, she just starts making tons of wishes on this thing, but she still doesn't know what it does, she just knows these wishes are coming true, especially when she's touching this box. Uh, but she doesn't know what's going on because she can't read the Chinese inscriptions on there. Luckily, she's got a Chinese friend at school. And he looks at it, he's like, well, I don't know what it says. But my cousin would know what it says. And then they go to his cousin, and she can inscript it, and she can read it, except for one phrase. And she, but she knows a friend who can read it, so she sends it off to that guy. And, man, Chinese actors of America... You need to unionize or something, because this is one of those times in which I just looked at this and it's like, you guys don't understand at all how the, like, ancient mystical Chinese person is, like, at all semi-racist. <laughs> it's like, did you just see gremlins, and then you went into a coma for 30 years, and you woke up and you thought that shit was still cool? It's like, I give it a pass in gremlins, because it was 30 years ago. We didn't know better. We fucking know better now. So, yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, I, I honestly was shocked that they were doing this, and it was like, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't nearly as racist as it could have been. It was more just the idea of it was racist. Yeah. The executions, like, nobody's going around with like a really bad accent or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so it wasn't as racist as it could be. Congratulations, that's the order you get. <laughs> Not as racist as you could have been. <laughs> Although, the only black character in here is the sassy one who has all the answers. Oh uh, like, yeah, the uh, sassy black the sassy stereotype. Black yeah, so, <laughs> so there's that one in there, too. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of really... They're not the most discriminated against groups, though. I'll get to who the most discriminated groups are, though, in just a moment. But basically, uh, they're able to, to read it, and they go, Oh, well, yeah, it's a wishing box, and basically, like, if you hold it and you say a wish then you're able, then the wish comes true, and you get seven wishes, and at this point she'd already used four of them, I think? Uh, and she has to figure out what the last remaining thing in there is that they can't encrypt, uh, can't translate, and then eventually the translation comes back and it says, oh, but when you make a wish, a blood pact must be paid. And basically it says every time she makes a wish, someone dies that she knows. And the first time, it's the dog. Of course, of the course dog the, dies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the dog's the first one to die. Then it's a rich uncle of hers who had never been mentioned at this point in the movie. We just see an old dude slowly get into a tub and he slips and falls and bashes his head on it. Uh, I was like, all right, what was that? And then, like, they announce he's dead with, like, they're watching the news. And it's like, hmm, that we're not in the will at all for that. And it's like... Oh yeah, I guess he's a thing. Again, <laughs> he might have been introduced in that like 10 minutes of this thing that I didn't see at the beginning, but considering I know so much of what happens in those 10 minutes based on the trailers and based on everything that they say later in this film, you must have just crammed the shit out of information in those first 10 minutes if he got introduced in there as well. Like, it would make sense if like, she wished for like a million dollars and then her rich uncle dies and then she inherits the uh, money. What happened? Yeah, see, that's the thing. It'd be a thing if, like, each of these wishes came true, but with a horrifying twist. Yeah, monkey's paw, basically. Monkey's paw, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so, but it's, it's just random people dying. It's just random people close to her die. But then, like, after that, she does wish, I wish Uncle would leave me everything in his will. So she does kind of get the money from that. But okay. I was like, dude, just wish for the million fucking dollars, and then, like, yeah, your uncle dies and gives <laughs> it to you. Um... Man, again, just like with Transformers, you're coming up with so much better shit than what's actually in this film. Yeah, like, I seriously felt like when I saw the trailer and it was about this, uh, box that, like, grants wishes but also, like, makes people die, and I thought the popular kid was gonna, like, rot to death. Yeah, exactly. No, doesn't die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, exactly. Here's the thing. The monkey's paw, paw formula has been around for generations. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how hard it is to screw it up? We all know this formula. And you're making a terrible version of it. Uh, this is like, you know what this is? When you go to the grocery store and it's the really crappy like cereal that comes in the bag. <laughs> And you're like, it's just as good as Fruit Loops. It's not just as good as Fruit Loops. It's not. Uh, it's like fruity circles. Fru <laughs> fruit O's. Yeah, it's like this is the Fruit O's version of the monkey paw. <laughs> but you know what it really is? It's the crappy knockoff version of Final Destination. <laughs> I talk so much crap about the Final Destination franchise. I'm not really a fan of them, but I will gladly step back and go, you know what? The one thing they do well are the kills in there. The kills in the Final Destination franchise, pretty damn good, pretty damn clever. Like, they're always a Ruth Goldberg machine yeah. thing. It's like, this goes here, this goes here, this moves that. And you're like watching, like, what's going to end up happening with this? They try to do that in here, and it's so bad. Like, you know that meme of, hey, can I copy off your homework? Yeah, but just don't make it obvious. That's what this is. Like, it's such a ripoff, but it just is done so poorly of that. Like, one of the kills, it's her neighbor. Uh, and I mean, they don't, again, it's not really as, maybe it was established in those first 10 minutes, but if it was, it is wham, bam, in and out, but like, she dies, and she dies because like, she's putting food in the garbage disposal, and the clip, and the like, switch for the garbage disposal is right there on the front of the sink, like where your stomach could press it when you're doing it, it's like, no one would do no, that. No, Every would... garbage disposal is under here or way up against the wall, mm -hmm. there is no way you could accidentally turn a garbage disposal on. <laughs> And she's fishing around in there trying to find it. And that goes on for like two minutes of them trying to dig in and grab stuff out. But then at one point, she takes the hand out, turns around, and her long ass ponytail goes in there. And she backs up, turns on, and her hair starts getting jerked in there. It's like, no, no. And then it jerks her back so hard, her neck snaps. A garbage disposal would get clogged like instantly <laughs> from a long ponytail. Like, it wouldn't, like, do you know? Just a second ago, vegetables were clogging this thing. It didn't get fixed from being clogged, and now your ponytail is going in there? Must be to, a fuck ton of hair. To the point where, <laughs> no, if it was a fuck ton of hair, it would get clogged instantly. Uh, but to the point where it's not, oh god, so stupid. Um, but like, there's another moment which you think her dad is going to die, and he doesn't, but like, that's kind of like the red herring for like a friend of hers who mm -hmm. was also in trouble at that same time. And it's the weirdest thing, again, this might have been something they set up in the first 10 minutes of this thing, but again, you had to have crammed a ton of shit into the first 10 minutes of this movie to get this in there too, but like, there's a moment in which they're in a hotel and they're about to leave, and then she just goes, oh, Murder Mary is here, and I was like, what the fuck is Murder Mary? What, what is this? And they're like, no, come on, let's go. I was like, hey, guys, first, monsters, mayhem, and murder, then I'm gonna be back. And I was like, what the fuck is, what are you talking about? And then she rides the elevator up to the 26th floor and she goes walking around with her camera and her camera's viewing everything. Then there's like ghost pops up and she slashes it and goes, you killed Murder Mary. And I was like, and she goes, yeah, I'm a oh, bad so it's, like, like, it's Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go, but with ghosts, which by the way is an idea that I fucking had and makes me really mad that I didn't like envelope that shit to myself because now I'm like, God damn it. So you're talking about how this movie is like a knockoff of Final Destination. I feel like Murder Mary is a knockoff of Bloody Mary. Oh, it does. <laughs> I might be getting the name wrong, but it was like, it was something Mary, something in Mary. But I was like, yeah, that's totally it. Yeah. But I was like, again, that had never been mentioned earlier in this film unless it was in that first 10 minutes. But then that means, again, that means you had to have introduced this character, her dad, uh, the house they're living in, the Chinese box, the popular kids at school, her friends, their rich uncle, and this like phone app game, which doesn't then get mentioned again for another hour in this game. But she goes up there to catch this ghost to the 26th floor. If it's like Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go can't tell height. No. It's all just a flat plane. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Why did you have to go to the 26th floor? This is stupid. <laughs> but yeah, she goes up there, and then when she's on her way down the elevator, then the elevator, like, breaks free and falls and crushes her. Whatever. But I mean, yeah, it was one of those things where just like, I was watching them talk about that, and I was like, what the fuck? What are these words you're saying? It's like, yeah, it's a phone app game that they never mentioned in this thing. Again, well, as if it was in that first 10 minutes. I have to keep putting that asterisk in there because <laughs> I missed the first 10 minutes of this film. But that's so much shit you had to have crammed in there. And then, even if you did cram it in there, you mentioned it once briefly in the first 10 minutes and then not for another, like, hour and a half in this movie. But anyway, so she realizes at that point when she makes these wishes, someone close to her dies. But the rule to it is if you lose 
throw away or give away the box, all your wishes are canceled. That's when this movie gets really fucking dumb. Don't get me wrong, it was bad already, but the main character in here, she's unlikable because she's such a whiny child in here like <laughs> i hate saying that but she really is like everything i remember but i wanted it <laughs> everyone in my mouth like but they're so mean like everywhere every single thing <laughs> out of her mouth is basically just i wanted a pony <laughs> i mean it's not that bad but it is so it is I mentioned there was a group in here more discriminated against than black people and Chinese people. It's teenagers, especially teenage girls. You can tell this was written by an older dude who just hates teenagers. Because <laughs> she is the most whiny, surface level piece of shit character. That is why I said, no matter how many other bad movies I see this year, this is at least going to be my at like my number 10 spot. Even if I see 20 other films I hate worse than this film, which will not happen, <laughs> this one is at least getting some kind of an honorable mention at the number 10 spot because this is the worst protagonist I have seen all year. It is horrible. <laughs> She, it's, I cannot comprehend how they let this character get this far in development and didn't stop and go, no one's going to like her. You know this, right? Because first off, everywhere off her mouth is, oh my God, Dad, you're embarrassing me. Why are you digging through trash all the time, Dad? Why don't the popular kids like me? Just every word out of her mouth is so whiny. And she's so super after her dog dies, mm -hmm. she is like looking at a picture online of like her dog's grave and like, oh, like on her Facebook page, like, oh, Max, oh, no. Then her like sassy friend contacts her in the little chat box and goes, yo, check out these pictures of this guy from our school. And she like clicks on and like a picture of him like shirtless and like a picture of him walk walking on the beach, like clearly like... <laughs> Not like, doesn't look natural at all. Like, like photoshopped? Not, not even photoshopped, but like, there was like a lighting crew there for that. <laughs> like, not the kind of thing that you would just casually take and put on Facebook. Uh, and then she immediately, like, it's literally, she looks at a picture of her dog the day he died. Oh, well, that's that guy from my school. I wish he fell madly in love with me. Okay. Your dog just died. You're not going to use your wish to resurrect the dog? Like, if you have a wishing box that does magical powers and does anything you want, and at this point, you don't know there's negative side effects to it, wouldn't your first wish just be bring my dog back to life? And secondly, even if you were like, well, I don't want to tamper with life and death stuff. Okay, that's understandable. Then wish for another dog or no, something? No, no, not even that, but it was like, why would you, within the span of 30 seconds, how fucking superficial do you have to be to within the span of 30 seconds go from I miss my dog this guy's hot like just instantly <laughs> over to I kind of want to ride his junk like that's just how quickly she moves on from that dog is never mentioned again you don't even give a shit about that dog after that point because she just moves instantly on to are you sure she's a teenager because she sounds more like a baby like she has a attention span like oh her doll broke give her a lollipop and she's happy again oh god that's a good, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it <laughs> but no she's not a teenager she's in her mid-twenties i really feel like i have to point that out really because after watching spider-man homecoming yeah man i'm gonna call out every high school pitcher <laughs> out there that cast mid-20 year olds <laughs> to play their high school students like the oldest person in Spider-Man Homecoming was Flash Thompson and he's but even he's 21 even he's still in college everyone in this goddamn film was like is this like the slow students class where all of you were held back for decades like all of you look ancient like the boy she falls madly in love with looks almost as old as her dad <laughs> like it's bad but so that's the second wish she makes after she makes that one, who was it that died? It was not the neighbor. It was the, oh yeah, their uncle. And then after that, she then like, she still doesn't know about the negative side effects of this, but she's starting to like figure out like, okay, it's wishing box and all that stuff. She then runs up, grabs the thing, goes, 
I wish my uncle left me everything in his will. And that's when the neighbor died. But then, like, yeah, they move into the mansion after that. Uh, and then the debt, and then, um, what was it? Uh, so then the neighbor dies. What was the fourth one? The fourth one, I remember what they all were. I'm trying to remember the order that they went in, though. Uh, oh, yeah. The fourth one is that she wishes, um, she's driving around in her big fancy new car <laughs> with the Chinese student after seeing her uncle, I mean, after seeing his cousin to do the translation. At this point, she still doesn't know that there are negative side effects, but she then sees her dad, like, digging through the trash, and she's like, Dad, we don't have to do this anymore. We live in a mansion now. And she goes back, grabs it. I wish my dad would stop embarrassing me all the time. And then, like, the next day, he's playing a saxophone for her and her friends, like, with a, like, jazz quartet behind him. <laughs> they do introduce he knows how to play the jazz and play the saxophone. So that's not, like, something that comes out of nowhere. But it's like, now he's in a nice suit, like, playing that with, like, a little quartet behind him. And the girl who plays Bard... Like, she wants to jump him. Like, she is, like, she tells, she tells, uh, Claire, is like, I hope this isn't too embarrassing for you, but your dad is, like, Hottie McHot Sauce. Like, he's, like, uh, uh, God, what's the, what are the phrase you say? They have so much, like, slang in here that is not real slang. Like, everything in here is, like, like, is that, like, what, 40 or 50 year old dude thanks high schoolers talk like, like, everything is just <laughs> such bad slang. But so they have this conversation, they discuss that, um, but then, like, after Barb says that, she's in looking at the dad, and the camera, like, slowly zooms in, and like, uh, I'm like, is that gonna be the negative side effect of this one? Because, like, when she wishes that guy to fall madly in love with her, he starts to get a little bit, like, creepy, like, there's a moment- Like a stalker? Kind of, yeah. In fact, there even comes a moment in which she wakes up in the middle of the night, and she looks out at her giant window, and there's a guy standing out there, and he runs, and she runs after him, and then her dad comes and was like, what is it? What's wrong? And she goes, I think someone's been following me. And he goes, what? Since when? And she goes, ever since I got that music box. And I went, no, <laughs> ever since you... two seconds ago. You've had that music box for weeks. You have not seen someone stalking you until this exact moment right now. And yet she just goes, ever since I got the music box. I was like, well, that's just a lie. <laughs> You're just making things up now. That's not accurate to anything we've seen at all in this film. Uh, but so, <laughs> so then she wishes for her dad to stop embarrassing her, so, and, spoiler alert, the stalker guy turns out to be the guy she wants to go madly in love with her, mm -hmm. and, like, yeah, he is, like, he eventually just reveals, like, yeah, it was him, he's been taking photos of her non-stop, it's like, Eesh. yeah, okay, so that's the negative side effect of that one, uh, but that's the only wish that has a negative side effect aside from, like, the bl whole blood pack thing. So, like, no one dies from that one? No, 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 I'll get to, no. People die in each of these, Yeah. but the wishes themselves work the way she wants them to, except for that one. That's the one where it's like, oh, there's a creepy twist to this wish. All the other wishes- Oh, suddenly there's the monkey's paw effect? Yeah, just for that second wish of him <laughs> having to madly fall in love with her. So when I saw, like, Barb kind of staring at him, I'm like, oh, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a weird, creepy-ass thing where, like, her dad starts dating her best friend or something, like, that's the creepy side effect from this one. It's like, no, that never comes up again. Oh. Never, ever, ever. Like, it's like, you barely even see the dad after that point. Like, well, like, it would actually, like, make sense if, like, the side effects of the wishes got more severe as yeah. she kept wishing. Exactly. This is such a simple <laughs> fucking concept. The Twilight Zone has done 9,000 episodes <laughs> on this thing alone. God damn. <laughs> um, okay. It's so stupid, but yeah, there's no negative side effects to any of these things aside from the blood pack, except for that second wish. The second wish had the creepy twist. There's no creepy twist to any of these other ones in here. But so that was wish number four. After that, that's when she learns about the blood pack. That's when she starts learning that all people are dying. It's because like the Chinese student's cousin, the one who translated, she ends up dying uh, on a dark and stormy night. Like literally like <laughs> as they're watching her dad play the saxophone, like you then see the music box start playing an opening of, which it does every time someone's gonna die, which they want that to be creepy. It's fucking not. It's just long and tedious. And then it cuts to her cousin and she, to the cousin, and she sees the email back from the guy. He's like, oh, this is, this is creepy. I have to call up my cousin and warn him about this. Power goes out, looks at her phone, no cell reception. Oh, of course, like, how the fuck would that? Cell towers have, like, backup generators for this exact thing, so that, that way your phone's... Uh, but she's able to then go out on her balcony where she gets cell receptions like 
So there's another backup. There's another backup tower like five blocks over from the one you <laughs> use. Either that, or you just can't ever make phone calls in your apartment because it's just how it is. And the power going out would have nothing to do with this. Uh, but yeah, she's got weird like statues all throughout her house. So she comes walking back in with the power off, and she then trips on her carpet and goes head first into a giant like bull statue in the porn <laughs> ranch room. But I mean, this is PG-13, so it's like, gore is not important to horror films. I think that people place too much emphasis on that. Mm -hmm. But if you gotta go for it, go for it, yeah, man. Yeah, like, go all the way. It's like, I was like, you don't need gore for a horror film, but don't give me, like, a cheap-ass, like, oh, isn't this creepy, when it needs gore to be creepy kind of thing. It's like, don't have somebody get impaled and not show it to me. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so after that, somehow then her cousin finds out about the blood pack thing, like, I guess he must have read her email there, even though he would have had to have hacked her account or something to do that, but that's never shown, that's never explained. <laughs> but he then finds out about the blood pack, he then goes and explains, uh, this to her, um, oh no, wait, first, uh, she then, first, that day, she then goes and sits down at the popular kid's table, with the guy who asked the question on her, and then everybody at that table was like, oh, I can't believe this. And they got up and left and just left her and her, the guy who's obsessed with her there. And then she runs home and goes, I wish I was the most popular girl at school. And I'm like, what the f how fucking sh You got the big fancy mansion. I was gonna you say got the hunky <laughs> guy going after you. How much do you fucking need? I mean, if the most popular, like, the most handsome guy in school is going after you and you already inherited a fuck ton of money, wouldn't you automatically be know, popular? Like, like, dude, <laughs> dude, if you're given all the money in town and the hunkiest guy in school is obsessed with you, if you still can't be popular at your high school, that's on you, alright? That's your problem. So, uh, or maybe she's, like, such a whiny bitch that no that one might cares be. about her. God, she is so unlikable in here. So that's the fifth wish that she makes. Uh, God, who was the one that died from that? Uh, oh, I know, I know who it was. Okay, yeah, that one, that was the sassy friend who died in the elevator crash. Um, so, God damn. Uh, but yeah, after that point, she starts to realize, okay, that's why people are dying around me, that's why this is happening, and this is before her sassy friend dies. So only four people have died, even though she's made five wishes at this point. But she's like, locked the music box up with like, a chain and some locks on, and she's explained to her friends that this stuff is happening, and like, she explains to them the rules that like, oh, if I get rid of it, then all my wishes go away. And they, all of them are just looking at her like, then get rid of it. <laughs> like, that's the one thing I can say about this film, after this point, when everybody knows what's happening, like all of her friends know this, the Chinese student knows this, like after this point, when everybody knows what's happening, all of them just turn to her like, give her the fucking box, you maniac! What are you fucking stupid? Like they're all looking at her like, this is all your fault that this is happening. And like, she just cannot get rid of it. Like she's like, no, 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 I just, I just won't make any more wishes. Like, I, I, just, I just can't, I'm not ready yet. Like, there's a moment in which she's like, taking the box out to the trash to throw it away. And then she hears her dad playing the sax in the background. And then she turns around, walks away, and is like, yeah, but my dad's cool now. I don't want to. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, people are dying because of this. That's just how, like, selfish she is. Yeah, like... when it got to that point, when she turned around because her dad was playing sex, I almost walked out of here because she was so fucking unlikable at that moment. Like, I always complain about how horror films try to make their characters unlikable so that way you don't feel bad when things happen to them. And I've always said, then you're missing the entire point of this. You're missing the entire reason why we get scared of these things. Like, if I don't care whether or not they live or die, I'm not going to feel anything. This is the worst example <laughs> I've ever seen of this. This is the worst protagonist in any horror film I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of horror films. Like, I think the thing that, like, really gets me is, like, if you get rid of it, then all, all the wishes get undone, but it's like, that kind of, like, 
loses the tension. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what? Thing. Like I get, like I kept thinking about every some other. Uh, I kept thinking about every other example I've ever seen in a horror film where there's some cursed item. Yeah. Some cursed item that's doing something, and there always comes that moment which is like, I can't do this anymore, and they throw it and get rid of it, and then it just instantly pops yeah. up, yeah, back into their home. No. No. She's so gonna put this in the trash and be gone forever. <laughs> It says that in the world, <laughs> you can easily lose me or get rid of me. Like, there's no negative ramifications other than the fact that you lose all the wishes. She just doesn't want to lose the big fancy house. She doesn't want to lose the popularity. In fact, there's even a moment when she's talking to her friends and she says, well, I don't even know if it really works. I mean, I'm not happy. And I was like, then it doesn't matter whether or not you get rid of this shit. <laughs> you are literally- Her next wish, I wish I was happy. <laughs> Go get some fucking Oxycontin or something, for God's sakes. I do not endorse going out and getting, like, drugs. Uh, I had to throw that out there, but I was like, dude, Jesus Christ. Oh, hey, buddy. Where have hey, you Cosmo. been this whole time? Hey, Cosmo. <laughs> Sorry, he's been gone this whole time and been super quiet, which is unusual for him. Well, we just took him out, so. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but, yeah, God, it is so... Oh, my God. It's so difficult. Uh, I'm losing my train of thought on this one. Oh, yeah, and then the next part is that then she goes to the Chinese student and she goes, all right, we, I'll get rid of it, but you gotta help me. And I was like, okay, so, <laughs> I guess it's one of these things where she's like, I know I'll be tempted too much, so I need you to get rid of it for me, so I'm not tempted, like one of those things. No, she needs his help to try and destroy it. Like, they're trying to smash it with a hammer. They're trying to, like, they try and throw it in the fire and watch and see if it burned. <laughs> It doesn't. It can't be destroyed. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Put it in the fucking trash. It can only be destroyed by the fires of Mortimer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a one Oh, thing. <laughs> there is a moment she goes full golem in this film. <laughs> like, she... Because then there comes a moment. After they can't get rid of it, they can't destroy it. Then, this is after the assassin friend dies, so her friend Barb, that's not her name in the film, but you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it just disappears. And then she disappears. She loses it. And I was like, oh, it's lost. Okay, cool. Wait, so like that's after the sixth wish or the last This one? is after the fifth one. Oh, the she fifth She still one. has two more. Oh, okay. And she has, at this point, not only found out th about the blood pack, she, this guy also continued to do the research and found the history of this thing, like where it goes from point to point to point. She, he found out it went over to this uh, U.S. soldier who was in China where it was created and he brought it back, and then all of a sudden he opened a successful car dealership, but then he ended up going crazy and blowing his own brains out. And then it went to this rich guy who actually lived just a couple blocks from where she <laughs> lives. And the rich guy, he is not listed in the credits, but it is so jarring when he pops up. I have to, I'm sorry guys, I have to look up his name because as much as I hate saying this, I looked it up a second ago and I've already forgotten it. Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> The rich guy in here in the flashback is played by Jerry O'Connell, and he is not credited in the credits, but I looked at that and went, that's Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> and the entire audience kind of laughed at it because they knew it was Jerry O'Connell too. And it was so weird because I was like, Jerry O'Connell, he's not really working these days. He's not really doing a lot, but he's still way too big of a name to be in here for one quick scene. Like, if he was in here as the dad, I would have bought it. But he's in here as one quick thing. It's like, did you know the director? Like... Why are you in this? It's so jarring to see that. Um, but then they show him and it's like, yeah, uh, it wound up with him. He won the lottery, married his high school sweetheart. They had two beautiful twins. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then his twins died, his wife died, and they say he went crazy and his house burned down. But what you don't know is that the demon that lives inside this, after you make the seventh wish, it comes for you. Well, I thought that was gonna happen. Yeah, like, eventually, yeah, exactly. it's like, oh, everyone dies, so the last wish you're gonna die. Yeah, it, yeah, it seems pretty obvious. But it's like, yeah, the demon comes and takes your soul, is what happens in the last wish. Uh, so now she even knows that. She even knows it's coming for her if it happens. So she still won't get rid of this thing after this point. But, I mean, she tries to, but the box just disappears. And then she's like, well, okay. And so they lose the house because it turns out the uncle didn't pay taxes for 14 years. So they repossess everything. They move back into their old house. Um, and then 
uh, her boyfriend that night, like the night before this happened, he showed up and was like, if you're not gonna be with me, I can't have anyone be with me. And he cuts his wrist right there, and then he like, they see, they show him getting put into an ambulance uh, and dragged out of there, uh, which is important for just a second. Because after they lose the box, and they lose the house, she then goes to school the next day, and the girl whose like face was like rotting, she comes back and like she's had surgery on the face, so you can see like the scars and everything, but she's still there, and she's like throws her drink at her and goes, yeah, 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 yeah Claire. And then the dude who cut his wrist the like two nights before this comes walking in with his hand around his old girlfriend, like, yeah, yeah, suck it, Claire. Like comes walking by, she's not popular anymore, doesn't have the money anymore, they don't know what happened. But then she sees the box in Barb's locker, and she goes, you took that? How could you take that from me? And it's like, it was murdering our friends, and you refused to get rid of it. Yes, I took it from you. <laughs> You're crazy. What is wrong with you if you don't want to get rid of this? So they start fighting over it, and then Barb falls down the stairs, but it's the worst fall I've ever seen downstairs. Like, they're like, oh my god, is she okay? I was like, yeah, literally anyone would have survived that fall right there. That's, I am, I am a fragile, fail, frail man. I would have taken that fall. Because it's one rollback, but it's like a very professional, like, oh, tumble rollback. Oh, yeah. And then they just lay flat as they slide down the stairs. It's like, Typically, people break their necks on stairs because they roll so many times that eventually is going. They're going to hit it at the point. Like they roll clearly right onto their back shoulder over just. <laughs> you would barely be maybe bruised from that. Like that's not painful. That's okay. <laughs> and then the Chinese dude takes her down and goes, "You have to get rid of it." Like and then she goes full golf. She is grabbing this thing. Like, no, no. I'm, I just won't make any more wishes. I'm just not going to make any more wishes. That's all I was going to I just, I just won't. Listen, I get to keep everything now, but I won't make any more wishes. That's all I'll do. And then, like, she runs away and is just like, you can't keep running from this. Like, that is one other thing I have to say that I have not mentioned yet. This is the most overacting movie I've seen all year. And it's not even the actor's fault. The script requires them to overact. Like, when something good happens, like when she gets asked out by the board, it's not just that like she's like, oh, hey, like having, she then has to have a scene where she goes home and goes home and goes, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm like, dude, we got it. Yeah, you know, we fucking, like every single thing in here is so overacted. And I can't blame anybody for that. <laughs> so she then runs home. She's got, <laughs> and then she just goes, I wish my mother was still and had never committed suicide. And previously in this, like after she told her two best friends about this, they were like, you're being incredibly selfish. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it was like, you didn't wish for like to cure world hunger or cure cancer or anything. Like, you're just, you didn't even wish for something for us. I mean, like, you know, like he, she's trying to go to this fancy college and she needs help with that. Like, yeah. She is the most <laughs> selfish piece of shit in here, and it's like, that's the one thing I gotta give this film. Everybody calls her out for being a selfish piece of shit all throughout this film. There's that, at least. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they, um, but then after they say that, she then goes, come on, guys, see, you know that, like, I didn't think that this was real. Like, if I thought it was real, don't you think I would wish for my mother to come back? I was like, you've known this has been real for a while, and you still haven't wished for your mother. Like, that's the one thing, like, if you had done that, I would have been like, okay, well, there's actual stakes. Like, she doesn't want to, like, she doesn't want her mother to die again. Like, that's why she can't throw mm -hmm. it away. No, everything up until the sixth wish is just, I want this. stuff. I want this. I want this. I want things. And, like, <laughs> if literally, like, your first wish was, I wish my mother had never committed suicide, and then your mom comes back, yeah, then there's stakes. Then there's, like, oh, yeah, that's why you can't get rid mm -hmm. of the box. Yeah. yeah. That's actually, like then you'll be killing your mother by doing that. I mm -hmm. Wow, that's a big thing. She doesn't do that till the sixth one. Her mom comes in, as well as two twin daughters that have never been there before, and is like, yay, happy birthday, honey! <sighs> and then she goes downstairs, and she's just like, okay, well, I just, I just won't make any more wishes after this. And then her dad gets his head chopped off by a chainsaw, slightly off camera, because again, they can't show gore in this. And then she just screams and she runs upstairs and grabs the box and goes, I know how to beat you! And I'm like, really? <laughs> Did he have a plan this whole time? Were you just waiting for the seventh wish to throw this out there? And her final wish 
than is, I want to go back, I want to go back right now to the morning when I found you. And then she wakes up in bed, she goes with her dad to where they found the box, and rather than her dad find it, she picks up, puts her back, and goes, okay, well, I gotta go to school right now. And then she runs off. She then goes up to the Chinese student and goes, hey, so I want to say this thing and this thing and this thing. Like, all the stuff they discussed throughout this. And he was like, okay, how do you know all this stuff? Like, how do you know I have a cousin? How do you know she has a lot? How do you know that I've been feeling bad about this thing that happened between us seven years ago? And then she, like, goes, well, maybe in the multiverse, and, which is another thing they mentioned briefly while they were, like, driving around in their car. Like, they have this moment when she goes, well, maybe in the multiverse this happened. She goes, well, in the multiverse this guy happened. He goes, wait a minute. You like talking about multiverses? And, like, that was their bonding moment in this? <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm a geek. I like talking about multiverses. I have never fucking ever bonded with someone over you like multiverses like this again this is written by a 40 or 50 year old dude who does not know teenagers and then they bond over the multiverse again she then kisses him and goes listen can you bury this don't open it just bury it for me and then it's like great thanks and then she walks away and she gets hit by a car and dies okay that's the end of the movie Alrighty. Like, I thought it would be, like, a, a loophole where, like, she has to, like, relive, like, getting the box over and over That's again. What, th there was a moment which I thought that, because she wakes up and acts like nothing is different or weird yeah. at all. I was like, oh, is that going to be what it is? Like, she keeps kind of having, like, deja vu. And, like, we then see the whole movie play out over the course of, like, a couple minutes. And then she goes, I wish. And then she's like, wait, no, I can't. And then wakes up again. And then, like, just keeps going and going. It's like, yeah, that could have been, like, a cool thing. It's like, again, good and interesting shit in here. No. <laughs> they didn't. This is just an overacting piece of crap with no originality to it. Really the most unlikable character of any film I've seen this year. Like any film I've seen in a couple of years, actually. <laughs> it's hard for me. I gotta go back a long way to find a worse character than this. She's so bad, the other characters call her out for being such a bad character. Doesn't make her better. No one knows how teenagers act in this film. The like actual like horror element of it isn't interesting at all and there's so many just god this is another thing i forgot to mention this is like there's like four music videos in this four times in which montages are playing and they just play like an entire song over it and i was like i don't think that the studio like was in with this band i don't think <laughs> the band paid them to do this i think they literally just said we know what teenagers like we know teenagers like music Get us some music that the kids are into. This ain't the music that the kids are into. All the songs in here are the most generic shit that you've ever heard. <laughs> like, it's all just that, like... It's what, like... Again, it's that fruit O's version of what, like, actual popular music is. Was well, it, like, public domain? So you it feels to... almost like public domain popular. <laughs> but this is the big twist. This is the one that made me go, you got me fucking kidding me there's a mo her mom is an artist there's a moment after her mom comes back to life when she's up in the attic and she at this point is not concerned about the box anymore at all she is not concerned about who the sixth person that's going to die is that is totally out of her mind her mom's back that's all that matters like you should still be like on the lookout for this shit she's going through all of her mom's old paintings and then she finds a painting of the chinese box of the wishing <laughs> box and it keeps flashing back to like showing her mom carrying the box out, putting it in the garbage, but then a flashback to like her like hanging herself in the attic, and it made me go, I'm sorry, are you saying she hung herself because she had the Chinese wishing box and the seventh wish made her kill herself? Are you telling me that her mom originally had this box and she made seven wishes on it and that seventh wish is why she committed suicide this is the dumbest twist i have seen in so <laughs> long looks like selfishness runs in the family <laughs> but that's the other thing that's the thing that i couldn't help but think about i was like okay so her mom made seven wishes they live in a fucking junk house with the dad, with a husband who digs through trash, and her rich older brother didn't talk to the family at all. 
What the fuck did she wish for? Maybe she was actually wishing for other people instead. Oh, maybe she was actually being nice? <laughs> yes, <your> maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, because that's the other thing. It's like, then what the fuck did she... What were her seven wishes? <laughs> and also... That student, the one who tracked it down, he said, I have tracked down every person that this went to. One of them was not her mom. Yeah. That doesn't match so... up with this story at all. It's a twist that makes no goddamn sense at all. Maybe she, maybe her mom got the box in the multiverse. <laughs> it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't even know why you're doing this. I don't know what the point of this is. Are you trying to say the box has been haunting her her whole life? We don't need that. It's haunting her now. That's all you that's all you need. You don't need oh my god. It'd be like if the survivor from the first it'd be if like if one of the kids from Camp Crystal Lake, Jason Voorhees, was there at their bat mitzvah. And they just <laughs> never knew until now. Yeah, like I thought it was gonna be like an inheritance. Like the uh, music box was Cursed, but it has to be. Oh, like when be... her mom died, it, it, she left it to her in her will. Yeah, and it's like that would have been way better. Yeah, it's like this has to be passed down to generation to generation, and it has. And if you break the chain, then like I don't know, something bad, like all hell breaks loose or some shit. Again, I just have to point this out. She only wished for herself. It's solely just her own greed that is getting people murdered. She knows this, and she won't. Get rid of it, and it literally there's no negative consequences to getting rid of it, other than the fact that you go back to your old life, and you even said you're not happy in this life with all the shit. So literally, you're just letting people get murdered so you can have shit that you openly admit you don't enjoy. There's no consequences. There's no consequences to this thing being gone. I feel and, like that's how rich people live their lives anyhow, so... I just need this thing. I just need more money. I haven't spent all the money I currently have, nor will I ever be able to, but I need more of it. I didn't mean to go into Trump voice there. The yeah, kind of but... We're going to build the greatest music box of all time. It's going to give you not three wishes. Like and the Chinese some... are going to make it for us. <laughs> the Chinese wishing box. It's gonna be great. I'm great with the Chinese. <laughs> what if one day we just got toured the Oval Office and there's like a monkey paw with like just four fingers down, like one <laughs> left hanging up there? No, the last one standing up is the middle finger. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> this is. This is like, I hated this movie. I fucking hate it. I'm sorry for all the times I've been cursing, but. I can't help it when I hate a film this much. <laughs> this is a great film to watch with people around, though, to just point out how fucking serious. She has not seen this, but she no, wants to. No, I want this just so I can see how stupid it is. So, if you enjoyed this, at the end of the year, when we do our annual Gauntlet of Garbage, where we watch all the films that people say are the worst films of the year, she will watch yes. it again, and we will do another video for this. <laughs> but yeah, like, I just... I can't get over that. It's like there's no problem <laughs> if you just put it in the trash. Yeah. Then we'll do it. It's literally like if to get away from Jason Voorhees, you just have to leave Camp Crystal Lake, <laughs> which is what the situation is already in the films. But if instead of him chasing you, he just sees you walking away and just goes, like, ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> just like that. Just. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's even dumber than that. I, I cannot think of a metaphor worse than what this film is. And thinking of shitty metaphors is what I do. <laughs> It'd be like if in order to defeat Jason Voorhees, no, not Jason Voorhees, if in order to defeat Freddy Krueger, you just have to remain asleep. That's the best I go with if it's just like, if Freddy Krueger came up to you in your dreams like, Hello, children, and you're like, hold on. It's like, oh, you got me. And now I'm gone forever. Won't see you tomorrow night, kids. Sorry. You found my one weakness, continuing to do nothing. <laughs> Bitch.
Sorry, I'm doing a Freddy Krueger impersonation. I have to throw that in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, God. Scary Terry is scarier than this. Oh, <laughs> oh bitch. <laughs> Oh my god. I it's this is I had heard how bad it was. It's stunning the places this goes with this to be like this so feels like someone's first movie just in the way it's shot, just in the way it's written. I'm so, the editing's fine, I'll give it that. Which after <laughs> I've seen Transformers, I feel like I have to point out when editing is okay. <laughs> but it is so bad. This and that Transformers film are neck and neck for my worst of the year <laughs> this year. Simply because with this one, I was criticizing it all throughout. And with the Transformers film, I was at least stunned by what was going on. I was at least curious what would happen next. And this one, I was like, how is this a movie? How did, how did this get past people? How did no one point out the numerous flaws in this thing? But yeah, it feels on every level like this is someone's first film. And the sad thing is, it's not. It's by the people who made that Annabelle film a few years ago, which I did not see because even though I love The Conjuring, I looked at that trailer for that Annabelle film and went, this ain't gotta be by those people who made The Conjuring. This is not gonna be as good. And sure enough, from what I've heard, it wasn't. And after seeing this film, I'd be willing to bet those people were right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, seriously, when this thing comes out on, on uh, like Netflix, because it probably isn't going to like Blu-ray, it's going to like <laughs> Netflix. When it comes out on Netflix, get a bunch of your friends together, Get a couple beers and just watch this thing and just laugh your asses <laughs> off. Cause, and the, the beginning of this film, like when people first started dying, there was a group of women in there like, oh no, oh, oh, oh. Like they were doing that. <laughs> like, oh, oh no, oh Lord, no. Like they were doing that in the theater the whole time. I watched it, that lasted for like maybe the first 30 minutes of the film. <laughs> After that, they were laughing hysterically. And it was like, they knew this was stupid. Like, even they couldn't put up with this anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, even the people who tried to be in this could not be into this. So, <laughs> hey, I highly recommend if you enjoy watching bad movies with a group of people, do it. This is such a good one. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you like this and you want to see more post geek out reaction or actual official reviews, make sure you click that subscribe button. Also, make sure that you follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Tumblr at Professor Lori. And come back next time. Bye. Bye. So stupid. <laughs>